The Spectator Bird is a novel written by Wallace Stegner and published in 1976. The story revolves around the life of Joe Alston, a retired literary agent, as he reflects on his past and confronts the challenges of aging and mortality. The novel takes readers on a journey through Joe's memories and experiences, exploring themes of regret, loss, and the search for meaning in one's later years. As Joe and his wife, Ruth, embark on a trip to Denmark, they encounter a series of events and encounters that force Joe to confront unresolved issues from his past. Stegner's writing delves into the complexities of human relationships, particularly Joe's complicated relationship with his son and his own personal demons. Through introspective prose and poignant observations, the novel offers a meditation on the choices we make in life and the lasting impact they have. The Spectator Bird is characterized by Stegner's ability to capture the nuances of human emotions and the complexities of the human condition. Blood Tie explores the going-ons of expatriates in a hotel in Saramos on the Turkish coast. The characters in the novel are generally unlikable, and their foibles become the central focus of the novel's plot. The major characters are legion, among the expats are an aging American divorcee who's lived there for three years on her meager alimony income, a decadent elder British ex-professor homosexual, a Dutch Jew, survivor of World War II who runs a popular tavern, a German archaeologist from the University of Michigan, a CIA agent posing as an aid worker, a rich and beautiful young American girl and a rather pathetic American married couple made up of an older roaming sailor and his nymphomaniac wife. There is a large frame of just what happens to sleepy and no-so-unpleasant Saramos when major tourist development turns the world of tradition and values upside down, nearly destroying all the above-mentioned characters in the process, but the whole Saramos as well. Author Mary Lee Settle has marvelous insight into the confusions and misunderstandings which arise between native and visitors in areas of language and culture. Going After Cacciato is a novel written by Tim O'Brien and published in 1978. The story follows the journey of a young soldier named Paul Berlin during the Vietnam War. Filled with a sense of disillusionment and a longing for escape, Berlin decides to pursue a fellow soldier named Cacciato who has deserted the army and is attempting to walk all the way to Paris. As Berlin and his comrades embark on the surreal and treacherous pursuit of Cacciato, the novel explores themes of war, the human psyche, and the power of imagination. O'Brien masterfully blends reality and fantasy, blurring the lines between what is happening on the ground in Vietnam and what is occurring in the characters' minds. Through vivid and evocative prose, O'Brien delves into the psychological effects of war on soldiers, the nature of heroism, and the ways in which the mind creates its own realities. As the journey unfolds, the novel raises profound questions about the purpose and futility of war, as well as the limits of human endurance. The novel stands as a powerful testament to the human spirit, exploring the complexities of war and its impact on those who experience it firsthand. Sophie's Choice is a novel written by William Styron and published in 1979. Set in post-World War II Brooklyn, the story follows the life of Stingo, a young aspiring writer who becomes friends with a Polish immigrant named Sophie and her lover, Nathan. As Stingo grows closer to Sophie and Nathan, he gradually uncovers the haunting truth of Sophie's past. Through a series of flashbacks, Sophie reveals her harrowing experiences during the Holocaust and the impossible choice she was forced to make at Auschwitz. The novel explores themes of guilt, trauma, and the enduring effects of war on individuals. It delves into the complexities of human nature and the ways in which personal histories and choices shape the present. Styron's writing captures the emotional intensity of Sophie's story, weaving together elements of love, loss, and the search for redemption. The novel grapples with the devastating consequences of Sophie's choice and the burden it places on her conscience. Sophie's choice received critical acclaim for its powerful and poignant portrayal of the Holocaust and its aftermath. Styron's exploration of guilt, memory, and the human capacity for resilience has made the novel a significant work of post-war American literature. The World According to Garp is a novel written by John Irving and published in 1978. The story revolves around the life of T.S. Garp, a writer whose unconventional upbringing and eccentric experiences shape his worldview. The novel explores themes of love, sexuality, gender identity, and the complexities of human relationships. Garp's life is deeply intertwined with the feminist movement as his mother, Jenny Fields, becomes a prominent feminist icon. Garp himself grapples with his own desires, relationships, and understanding of masculinity. Through a series of interconnected vignettes in Garp's own writings, Irving presents a satirical and often darkly humorous commentary on American society, politics, and the human condition. The novel tackles themes of mortality, tragedy, and the pursuit of art and authenticity in a world marked by unpredictability. Irving's distinctive storytelling style and vivid characterization bring the eccentric cast of characters to life, including Garp's complex relationships with his mother, his wife, and his children.
Plain Song, Four Female Voices is a novel written by Wright Morris that explores the lives and experiences of several women in a small town in Nebraska. The story revolves around the interconnected lives of these women, each struggling with their own desires, dreams, and disappointments. The narrative unfolds through a series of interconnected vignettes, each focusing on a different character and their unique perspective. From a young girl grappling with the pressures of conformity to a middle-aged woman facing the challenges of marriage and motherhood, the novel delves into the complexities of womanhood in a rural setting. Through Morris's vivid and evocative prose, readers are transported to the plains of Nebraska, where the vast landscape mirrors the internal struggles and desires of the female characters. The author skillfully explores themes of identity, self-discovery, and the longing for fulfillment. Plain Song for Female Voices is a lyrical and introspective novel that delves into the depths of the human experience, particularly from a female perspective. The Stories of John Cheever is a collection of short stories written by John Cheever, one of the most celebrated American writers of the 20th century. Published in 1978, the collection showcases Cheever's mastery of the form and his keen insight into the lives of suburban Americans. The stories in this collection explore themes of domesticity, conformity, and the disintegration of the American dream. Cheever delves into the lives of seemingly ordinary individuals and exposes their inner turmoil, secrets, and struggles with identity. Through his rich and evocative prose, Cheever captures the contradictions and complexities of human nature. His stories often center around themes of alienation, failed aspirations, and the search for meaning in a world that can feel stifling and disillusioning. Cheever's characters range from affluent suburbanites to working-class individuals, each grappling with their own personal demons. The stories touch upon universal experiences of love, loss, family dynamics, and the yearning for connection and belonging. The stories of John Cheever won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1979 and solidified Cheever's reputation as a master of the short story genre. Rabbit is Rich is a novel written by John Updike and published in 1981. It is the third installment in Updike's Rabbit Angstrom series, following the life of Harry Rabbit Angstrom, a middle-aged man living in the suburbs of Brewer, Pennsylvania. Set in the late 1970s, the novel explores Rabbit's life as he navigates the challenges of middle age, family dynamics, and the changing social and economic landscape of America. Rabbit is now the owner of a successful car dealership and is enjoying the material comforts that come with it. However, despite his apparent success, Rabbit finds himself feeling restless and unsatisfied. He grapples with issues of mortality, his strained relationship with his wife Janice, and the complexities of fatherhood as he tries to connect with his troubled son Nelson. Through Rabbit's experiences, Updike delves into themes of identity, aging, and the pursuit of happiness. The novel provides a keen observation of American society during this period, examining the impact of consumerism, politics, and shifting social norms on Rabbit and those around him. So Long, See You Tomorrow is a novel written by William Maxwell and published in 1980. The story revolves around the themes of memory, loss, and the complexities of human relationships. The novel is narrated by an unnamed protagonist who reflects on a tragic event that occurred in his small Midwestern town during his childhood. The event involves a murder-suicide and the subsequent impact it has on the lives of those involved. As the narrator delves into his memories, he recounts his friendship with Cletus Smith, a boy who becomes entangled in the aftermath of the tragedy. Through their friendship, the novel explores themes of guilt, regret, and the ripple effects of past actions. Maxwell's evocative prose captures the essence of a bygone era, immersing readers in the details of rural life and the emotional landscapes of the characters. The narrative seamlessly weaves together past and present, blurring the lines between memory and reality. So Long, See You Tomorrow is a poignant exploration of the human condition, examining themes of loneliness, forgiveness, and the imperfections of memory. It delves into the complexities of friendship and the ways in which people attempt to reconcile with their past. The Color Purple is a novel written by Alice Walker and published in 1982. Set in rural Georgia in the early 20th century, the novel explores the life and journey of Celie, a young African-American woman. Narrated through a series of letters, the story unfolds as Celie shares her experiences, joys, and hardships with God. She endures years of abuse and mistreatment at the hands of her stepfather and later her husband, Known as Mr. Despite the Oppressive Circumstances, Celie finds solace and strength through her deep connection with her sister Nettie and the friendships she forms along the way. As the narrative progresses, Celie undergoes a transformative journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Through her relationships with other women, particularly the strong-willed Shug Avery, Celie learns to reclaim her voice, assert her identity, and confront the systemic oppression and racism that shape her world. The Color Purple addresses themes of racism, sexism, violence, and the power of resilience and love.
It highlights the importance of sisterhood, community support, and personal liberation.